Sometimes I don't get all this in one take. But it is Sunday. It's Sunday morning coffee. Um, I ramble badly. I get to a point. I realize I've veered off course. So here we are. Uh, Jerry from the shop. He's been down helping us with the G20. We've been putting in more hours. That's why I know videos. I got internet. I got everything I need. I've been putting in a lot of hours at home. Making my mess of a house more, well, home-like. Um, a lot going on in the shop. A lot going on just in life in general. Okay, It's been a really wild ride for the last couple months. In all the right ways. Uh, no excuse really for not having another video up between this Sunday morning coffee and the last. I've got the footage. I'm moving on. If you guys want to see the sand rail footage from the second go around when we had to change a bunch of shit for the guy and repaint it, let me know down here, down in the comments. Let me know. Um, the reason for no footage this week really boils down to uh, Cornell's Garage made a statement on the last Sunday morning coffee, and he's exactly right. You got to put in more time. It's not magic what we're doing here. It's work. Work takes time. You got to go about it. Go do it. Okay. So there we are. Um, hey, no, I am. 15, 16 hour days, six days a week, I'm incapable of doing because of responsibilities elsewhere. But I still put in the hours where I can. Jeremy puts in the hours where he can. We send the new guy off when the day is over. New guys, people, products, production. Let's get into that for a second. Jeremy, I give him all the pertinent information, everything he could possibly know down to. Oh, hell, I don't know. Every spot of information on a project, as I see it, that he's to be working on. I've been playing Pit Boss. 30% of my production is gone. Just organizing, keeping people on track and on task. Um, I give Jeremy what I'd like to see done. He tells me if it's possible or not. And I tell him to push it and meet me somewhere in the middle. Nick, I give him timelines and one task at a time. If I give him all the information, he wants to sit down, smoke a cigarette, drink a soda, and talk about it for a half hour. Good kid. He will fit in well once he calms down and settles in. And he's more familiar with our standards of operating. Yes, we have a baseline standard operating procedure. Uh, it was written out once, and I need to write it all out again, and expand on it and redirect it so there's that um, back to Cornell's garage he's exactly right and I can explain to you precisely how it happens how people get in over water uh, underwater on projects like this there's two things that happen you get a project in progress is slow and you need <coughs> overhead money you need bill money, you need something for the pot. You either figure the project wrong or something happened that held you up. Usually a little bit of both. Can't have all that, but it happens. The other one is people make emotional decisions about money for their business. Um, we've turned away a lot of work that I wanted really badly to take because it was cash in, it was cash flow, it was money in the shop. <laughs> might even put a little money in the pot but that being said we've got three projects we're on a heavy push right now fourth one that's going to have a heavy push on it and then we're damn near caught up we're taking in well I should say I'm putting out a lot of estimates and paperwork on other projects I'm pushing people back into August which is very difficult for me to do because we're cash flow poor right now. But we grind on the projects at hand, we get them done, we move them out. The money will be there, just got to put the work in. So with, with Cornell, I, I agree with him wholeheartedly. And it's a circumstance I shan't let happen again. That way? Nope. That way? And with that, you know, that pretty much is about it. You know, you have 
you've got to work people. Um, it's like this: you can you lose your personal production if you've got to play pit boss and run guys. <coughs> Ideally, I'd have one more guy in there because I would lose the same amount of production as I do right now. But what I'm capable of having them do would make up for the loss of production then some plus plus because I'm always going to lose production I'm answering calls I'm dealing with that I leave my phone the fuck on my toolbox I go back I, re I call people back that I miss their phone calls I listen to messages I move on um, I don't sit there with my phone in my pocket the new guy I had to threaten him with uh, the bandsaw and his cell phone over that situation because I you can't have it it's a shop environment it's a production environment. Um, if it comes time for disciplinary action, uh, a, another for instance, okay? Like I said, I'm not talking bad about Nick. He's acclimating to the shop. He's been there less than a month at this point. Uh, prior, he's got his family, family owned for almost 100 years, body shop place, 60, 70 years, something like that. They've got a body shop. Well, they never, they, they had him do butthole jobs. And only part of it. And never taught him shit. So he's learning on the curve right now. He's familiar with everything, the processes and things like that. We do things differently, clearly. We're not a collision shop. That changes your order and, and process minorly. All the same things are there, but the minor shit on a collision is a little bit of bodywork and bondo, hang new parts and roll on. Well, we're refabbing old parts. So the body work and metal work and bondo, that's a major part of our jobs versus collisions. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, he's got things in the morning, so we agreed on a 9.30 start. Uh, I think I even brought this up in last Sunday morning coffee. But I'm trying to get something of a concise roadmap. If you're looking at this and you're silly enough to say I'm going to go do it, <laughs> obviously make sure you got some manner of backing. I started with less than zero. And we're still there. But we look more like a hot rod shop now, not some... Gosh, I'm not saying this is derogatory, but it's fact around here at least. Some Hist Hispanic body shop. <laughs> the guys do a horrendous volume of work for far less than they probably should at a far lower degree of professionalism. <coughs> we don't look like that no more. And very poignantly, we've been working on all those aspects. Plain shirts on the floor, no band shirts. You know, I've got some button-up, button-down work shirts that I wear it does make a difference it brings morale up brings a unity to the shop as silly as it sounds the little things so that being said it is imperative to go through those steps disciplinary actions we agreed on 930 and then he took because he was calling me in the morning every morning he was getting there getting there right at 9.30, 9.33 in that realm of reason. We agreed on 9.30 because he would call me every morning at 8.55 say so he's going to be a little late. Then the next week goes by 9.35 9.55 10.30 Finally, I pulled him aside. He had showed up at, at 10.45 he called me. He let me know he was running late. He let me know what was going on. 10.45. I pulled him aside. Not in the shop. I didn't yell. I didn't scream. But I dealt with it right then. The minute he got in the shop, I pulled him aside and dealt with it. I explained to him a few things. And moved on with the program. He's getting there before 9.30 now. So I think the point was made well enough disciplinary action and if it's an official issue we're such a relaxed atmosphere in the shop I don't have a lot of paperwork and shit like that on personnel issues because we don't have personnel 
<laughs> I stated to him plainly and bluntly, this is official disciplinary action because this is fucking ridiculous. You can be the best worker on the planet, most experienced, best craftsman I've ever seen. If you don't show up, I can't do anything with you. I'd rather have Joe Blow that don't know shit that shows up on time and tries and cares. You know, the only thing is bringing people in you can multiply your labor. You can divide it out between everybody and get all the little shit done quick. Then you gotta start teaching them something. But that's a glimpse in my world. Take it or leave it. Uh, I got a lot of faults. I live in a very simple means on purpose. I could be a millionaire. I'd still live in simple means. I don't need a lot of shit in my life to... to distract me or detract from living and I do a lot of things wrong I do a lot of things right but I never do anything by half my friends if you're going to fuck up fuck up at full speed it's easier to ask for forgiveness later than it is for permission now You had input, insight, abuse, advice, drop it in the lines below me. I'm easy to find. Crawl over to the Facebooks. Find me on there. If you really hate me, give me one of those. That's cool. I, I, I don't mind. I like it better when people leave comments, even to the derogatory. At least I know what direction I'm going. I, get some, I got a bunch of thumbs down on this control arm I did. I'd never done a control arm on that vehicle, and I hadn't done a control arm in f five years at that point. So I was going at it pretty well cold. Homeowner, control arm, go. A lot of the repair videos I'm doing right now are the little side jobs I do on a Saturday or an evening. Uh, most of them are for friends and family that aren't even really paid gigs. So the repair videos I put up are meant to establish exactly that baseline. If you've never done it before, you can go do it with simple basic tools. And I even try to break out just a simple toolkit versus my whole cabinet. You guys have a great day. I am out.